everyone welcome back to my channel today I will be showing you how to make this uh, little coat for children up to six years old I will give you the chart uh, for sizes for one to two years two three three four four five and five six so you will be able to follow the chart and make it for this uh, for the babies or children uh, the size that you want uh, this is the size two to three years in pink. I do think that this is a gender neutral pattern. As you will see, I will show you um, some in boys colors. Okay, so uh, this is for a girl. I have these pom poms. I made the little toggle buttons here in front myself. Um, little opening right here. A hood. A little, little bit of a higher neck and the pattern okay so the pattern is really really simple uh, it's double crochets into the front and the back loop so we will be switching them around now there's always somebody uh, that is quite a beginner that watches my videos and finds them difficult okay so if you find this stitch difficult you can just make everything with double crochets no front or back loop just double crochets of course you're not gonna have this wavy pattern around uh, but you will be still uh, able to do everything that is on here it will just be a bit more flat than this and um, uh, one thing that I'm going to say this, so the most difficult part in this cardigan is probably right here so you cannot see it it's because we are lifting the back of the cardigan up we have two extra rows and just take caution take your time um, uh, just uh, stop for a second when I'm showing you, the, you this part uh, the hard part will be to figure out uh, which double crochet to start with and I will be uh, very slow and I will try to explain as uh, as much as I can okay as slowly as I can so just watch out for this part you can watch it first and see if you can understand what I am doing okay so there we go we have sleeves oh excuse me we have pockets and we have sleeves so this is a size two to three years I have another one right here which is a size one to two years everything exactly the same uh, I just put in buttons so this is absolutely uh, easy which whatever you prefer buttons or the toggle buttons uh, other than that everything is exactly the same so this is a size one to two years now the next one that I have is for boys uh, in color mustard again I have made these up myself I added a bit more uh, of the brown color so you can see the neckline right here, the little string for the hood, and right here. So this is a size um, four to five years. Everything exactly the same, just bigger. Again, we have the we have the snap buttons and everything. Okay. Uh, I have one more in a small size. This is a size one to two years. So I'm, I kept this very simple. Uh, the only thing why I wanted to show you is I used this speckled yarn and the pattern really kind of gets lost in it. Okay. So if you're thinking what yarn you're going to use, perhaps um, if you like color, uh, perhaps choose some striped yarn that doesn't stripe too often uh, so you can actually see that pattern like this okay and again just simple buttons like that on um, on little ropes okay so if I got you interested in uh, making these let's go and have a look of what we're going to need for this project Okay, so for this project, you're going to need a measuring tape in centimeters uh, to follow my chart because uh, my chart is in centimeters. But if you're more familiar with inches, you, there's an inch um, metric system on the other side. Okay, that might be easier for you. So you, let's say 15 centimeters is 6 inches. So you can do it like that. Okay, uh, now next you're going to need uh, scissors. Uh, buttons however many you want I have these uh, toggle buttons for this um, um, cardigan 
Now you don't have to use them you can just use normal buttons uh, that are a little bit bigger these are approximately an inch wide or about two and a half centimeters maybe a little bit bigger these ones okay so just don't use the small ones uh, because the yarn is quite thick and you're gonna need something um, bigger to hold it in place now uh, I used uh, three buttons for the size one to two years uh, so approximately three or four buttons I have two of these toggle buttons if you use toggles you're gonna need snap buttons okay one or two I have two here to match the color and these are uh, 15 millimeters wide and they are just so on so we'll be able to sew them through the little holes there okay next stitch markers I have a whole bunch of them you're gonna need at least five uh, now I have a lot because I will be um, marking my decreases on the sleeves on both of them uh, at the same time so I need a lot of them if you don't have a whole lot of uh, stitch markers you can always get a piece of paper and just write down where what rows you did the decreases on then something for the um, for the strings uh, around the hood uh, I have these uh, special ends for the strings that close like this and I have them in color black uh, actually get them in loads of colors uh, but they don't have brown to match my toggle button so I chose black now if you don't have them don't worry you can just leave the um, the little string with a knot at the end you can put uh, like pom-poms or a tassel or uh, a bead or something like that okay so but I do, I do have these and you're gonna need something um, to pin down the pockets if you are going to do them I just have these little needles okay so next let's talk about yarn and hook okay so I will be using a five millimeter hook and a run weight yarn okay so this is a medium weight uh, it's a little bit thicker you don't have to use the same yarn as me uh, just uh, make sure that uh, you do need to use a five millimeter hook okay so any yarn with a five millimeter uh, that is a little bit thicker okay I usually use my DK weight yarn you can see this is a DK weight and this is a run okay this is much thicker so how much yarn we're going to need so for the sizes up to three to four years so one to two two to three three to four four hundred grams will be enough there is approximately in my yarn here there's approximately 175 meters in a hundred uh, gram skein uh, and this is going to be enough for the size three to four years now if you're going to make four five or five six you're gonna need another 50 grams or so okay so 400 will not be enough now I will be making a size three to four years so this should be perfect and I have it in color light gray now you might have seen this little thing that I have here now you don't have to, to have it but if you have a very very similar color in lighter weight yarn like I said this is DK and this is very very similar colors I'm going to use this thinner yarn to do the bottom of the hood Just give me one second okay so right here so this part right here that will be uh, that I will be sewing down with this is thinner yarn now if you don't have a uh, DK weight or the lighter weight yarn it's no problem you can do it with the same uh, yarn like right here the only difference is that if you use thinner yarn it is much more uh, bendy and softer around the edge right here and it's a little bit thicker as you can see if you use the same yarn again it's not a big difference but if you have it I would recommend you use that thinner um, for the hood okay so I think I have mentioned everything so any kind of around weight yarn uh, this is 100% acrylic um, in any colors that you want 400 grams for up to three four years and four five five six you're gonna need a little bit more okay now when we have uh, everything ready let's get started okay so to start grab your yarn your hook and have five stitch markers nearby okay so first of all uh, for the people that are here new on my channel this is our first row okay 
So these numbers is the number of single crochets, these are corners, and this is the number of chains that we have to start with, okay? And this uh, one is smaller and one is a little bit bigger. So the smaller one with 53 chains plus one is for one to four years. So one to two, two to three, three to four years, okay? Now if you're making four, five, or five, six years, you're gonna start with 63 chains. You're gonna have a little bit more. Okay, so I will be making a size three to four years. So I'm gonna start with 53 chains. Make a slip knot and start chaining. So 53 for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I will keep going until I have 53 chains. Okay, so I have chained 53 chains. So this one right right here. Now whatever number, this one or this one, you have chained for the size that you are making, okay, you're gonna follow the numbers around it. So if you change six to three, you're gonna look at the numbers on the bottom square. If you changed uh, 53, like me, you're gonna look at these numbers right here around this square. Okay, so to start, so we do a plus one, we add one more chain, so I have 54 chains right now. We're gonna skip that chain. And starting in the second chain, we're gonna do single crochets. So one single crochet, you're gonna count, okay? So one, I need seven single crochets before my first corner. You might have nine if you're doing the bigger one, okay? So seven. Have one into the next one. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven, seven single crochets. Now the little one right here is the one chain where we're going to do our increase in the corners, okay? So into the next chain, we're gonna put three single crochets. So the next one, one, two, and three, all three in the same chain. Now take a stitch marker, and you're gonna mark stitch number two from the hook, okay? So the loop on the hook doesn't count, one, two and mark that second stitch, like that. Now we're gonna continue, we're gonna look at the number on the side, I have nine, that means I need nine single crochets. Starting from the next chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine so nine single crochets you might have 11 if you're making the bigger one again our second corner into that next chain we put three single crochets one two and three mark stitch number two from the hook okay so one and Then it is the back of the neck, so I have 17 single crochets, or 19 if you're making it bigger, okay? So 17, starting from the next chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 single crochets. Now it's our third corner into the next chain, three single crochets. Okay, so I have one, two, and three. Mark your stitch number two, one and two. Then we have the other shoulder, so it's nine or 11. It is nine for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight and nine single crochets our very last corner three single crochets into the next chain one two and three mark your stitch number two one two and to finish now we should have this number of chains left or uh, this number of single crochet so I have seven one two three four five six and seven so perfect the numbers are important make sure that you have um, have the correct amount everywhere okay otherwise our pattern is not going to work correctly okay so have a good look we will not be needing this anymore if you need uh, to look at the numbers I'm gonna put this away and now we're going to start uh, row one of the two repeat rows okay so it's quite simple you will always start with chain one and you're gonna turn we're gonna put a double crochet back into that very first stitch right here so chain one does not count as a stitch so a double crochet in a full in both loops like a normal double crochet okay and then after that we are gonna start with a back loop uh, double crochet and the front loop double crochet so the loops are if you look at the stitch okay you have the front loop right here the first one the first thread and the back loop is the second thread in the stitch okay so first we will be making a double crochet into the back loop only we will only catch the back part and the next stitch will be into the front part so right here now after you make that first double crochet into both loops you're gonna yarn over find the next stitch so which is that one you are sort of gonna go right into the in between the like right in the middle of the stitch and just catch the back loop only one thread okay the back one You're gonna pull out you have three loops on your hook and just make a normal double crochet now that was a back loop double crochet now the next one will be the front loop so we're only catching the first loop we leave the second one out so you're gonna go from underneath and only catch that front one okay so the back one is down there and make a double crochet and then again the next one is the back loop and then it's the front loop from underneath then it's the back loop then it is the front loop and we should finish with a back loop double crochet before our stitch marker okay just like that now where the stitch marker is I'm gonna take that out and we're gonna make a new corner it's gonna look a little bit different than in the previous row so we're gonna put in a double crochet into both loops like a normal stitch double crochet you're gonna chain one and make a double crochet back into that same stitch just a normal double crochet like this like a V stitch put that stitch marker back into that chain one like right in the middle now once you do a corner you want to start the next um, part with the sta same stitch you have finished here before the corner okay so we finished with a back loop double crochet we make the corner and we start the next stitch with a back post or oh sorry uh, back loop double crochet then it's the front loop back loop and so on you keep swapping these two stitches around until you get to the next stitch marker
and you should finish again you should finish with a back loop double crochet before the stitch marker okay so back loop uh, corner start with the back loop you keep swapping them around and you finish with a back loop before the stitch marker again so you will always be finishing and starting uh, after the corner with the same stitch okay it just uh, the pattern needs to be to look the same everywhere okay at every corner so stitch marker out a double crochet chain one double crochet stitch marker back in under the chain one and continue again it was a back loop here that I have finished so I start with a back loop and then the front loop and then the back loop so keep going uh, finish repeat row number one uh, I don't think I need to show anymore it is quite simple just remember back loop double crochet chain one double crochet and then you start with a back loop and keep going I will see you at the end of this row okay so I'm finishing repeat row number one and I have two stitches left now you're second last stitch will always be a back loop double crochet and then the very very last stitch is gonna be a normal double crochet into the both loops like this okay so here we are our first row now second row is very very similar uh, there's really only uh, one difference which we're gonna see in a second so we start again with chain one and turn into the very first stitch remember skip that chain one it doesn't count as anything we just put a normal double crochet into the both loops and then we start our pattern with a back loop double crochet always with a back loop okay like this and then again it's the front loop so not much changes apart from the fact that we are gonna uh, finish this time our last stitch before the stitch marker is going to be a front loop double crochet which was a back loop double crochet in the previous row okay so here we are you can see my last double crochet is right here okay and we finish with a front loop this time like that okay because we added an extra stitch in the previous row uh, our stitch count makes it that we finish with a front loop then into that chain one we put a double crochet chain one and double crochet for as long as we are making the yoke our corners are always going to look the same double crochet chain one double crochet now once we have done the corner the next stitch is going to be the front loop because we have finished with the front loop right here okay so front loop double crochet and back loop and so on so as you can see there's not a whole lot of difference you keep um, switching up those two stitches I just want to show you one more corner just in case there are beginners that are not familiar with the way I crochet although it is very clear I believe okay so keep going front loop back loop and front loop again you can see last stitch before the stitch marker and then we have the stitch marker in the chain one I'm gonna take that out and double crochet chain one double crochet stitch marker back in well, you don't have to use stitch markers if um, if you don't need them because it is quite clear where the corners are I will eventually I, I will take them out because it takes time to take them out and put them in but for now I'm gonna keep it so after you make the corner you start with the same stitch right here so again it is a front loop double crochet and that is it so keep going I will see you at the end 
of this row. Okay. Okay, so I have two stitches left, and again, the second last stitch will always be a back loop double crochet. And we finish with a double crochet into the last stitch, full stitch. Now for a second, I'm just going to chain one so it doesn't run away. Now, uh, for one second, we're going to put this down. First of all, we should have an extra stitch marker. Now, uh, make sure that you, after you finish that second row, you place your yoke like I have. So you have your um, working yarn under your... Uh, this is left hand, okay? So on the right, uh, left hand side right here, okay? And now you can put that stitch marker absolutely anywhere. We are just going to mark that this is the face side of our cardigan. It's going to come in uh, important uh, eventually, okay? We just need to make sure that we have that um, marked. So just like that, okay? So I'll know my brown stitch marker marks the face uh, side or the good side of the cardigan. Now the second thing that we need to do uh, perhaps grab a little piece of paper, I'm just going to write down on the other side, and a pencil, and grab a stitch mark, uh, sorry, measuring tape. I'm going to try to get it like this. Oh, excuse me, i got the problem with the lights. Okay, so now we are going to measure how long the two rows are at the corner, okay? Uh, because we're going to have to lift up the back of the cardigan, and we will need to stop the yoke when we are two rows away from finishing uh, the length of it, okay? So you can see right here, so don't measure the single crochet row. So see, one and two little holes and just above it. I'm going to measure from here down, okay? Like this. So uh, it's approximately four centimeters for me, the two rows. And don't measure it like this, it's going to be different. The uh, corner stitches are uh, a little bit longer because we have the extra stitches in there and um, uh, chains. Maybe not four, maybe three and a half centimeters for me, the two rows, okay? And I'm just going to write that down. Approximately three and a half centimeters to rows. This will come in uh, very handy a little bit later, okay? And just have that somewhere uh, close. Okay, uh, so at this point, uh, I'm just quickly going to show you uh, how to start uh, repeat row number one again. This is re uh, row three for us, and it's going to be exactly the same as repeat row number one. Start with chaining one. I already have that. You're going to turn double crochet into the first stitch and like always start with a back loop double crochet and continue with uh, swapping around those two stitches front loops are sometimes a little tricky to catch back loop front loop back loop, front loop, and we finish again with a back loop, double crochet. So uh, if it's hard for you, um, uh, you can try to remember that all the odd number rows, so row, no, uh, row number 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and however many we need to make this for the yoke, will be finishing with a back loop double crochet before we make the corner and all the even number rows so two four six eight and so on we'll be finishing with a front loop um, double crochet okay before we make the corner so again it was a back loop I'm gonna take the stitch marker out and make a double crochet chain one double crochet stitch marker in if you need it and then you start again with a back loop double crochet now I'm not gonna show you anymore because uh, this is all we really need to make the yoke and uh, we will only be repeating uh, these two rows for a while now uh, the most common mistakes okay uh, so there will be people that uh, don't end up on the stitch that you need to end up with uh, with the corners, okay? Uh, and it will happen. Now, 
the the most common mistakes that I have noticed for me personally is that uh, if it doesn't turn up what it has to be right here before the stitch marker, I usually do a mistake that I do the same two stitches in a row. Okay, so let's say I make uh, two back loop uh, double crochets and then a front loop, and that uh, throws off the pattern. Okay, so I, I quickly have a look, and it's very easy to notice actually um, when you when you look for it. Or I usually start with the wrong stitch after the corner, okay? So if it was a back loop, I might start with a front loop. And then I have to check again, and then I look, oh, okay. So I started with the wrong one, and I pull it out and start over again. Now, there's uh, one very good way of noticing uh, that you are with a wrong stitch. Now, if you look closely, uh, it's a bit hard to see on my um, yarn. But some of the stitches are sticking out this way, and the others are uh, back in there. So this is a back loop, so it's kind of uh, sticking out at the back, and this is the front loop, so it's sticking out closer to me. Now, if you notice that the two uh, that are sticking out in the front stitches are really underneath each other, like they make up a little line right here, you are in the wrong. They, they should be like a chess, you know, so sticking out, sticking out, sticking out, like they should be all on the side. And if they are underneath each other, it starts to make these little um, kind of lines, and you will definitely notice that. I might actually try to to make a few. Okay, so it should be a front post. I'll make a back post. Front post. So this is the wrong way, I just want to show you, just to show you, okay? Okay, so you can see how these two are sticking out one uh, above uh, or uh, above each other, okay? So they make a little line, so this is wrong, so this is one of the indications that you can uh, notice straight away that you are on the wrong stitch and then you have to go back and look for the problem, just because I had two uh, stitches the same one after another. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and uh, just uh, take your time. You will get used to the pattern and you will be absolutely fine. It might be a little bit difficult in the beginning when you have to think about it, but eventually uh, it will go like butter. Okay, so we need to keep going with the yoke until I'm gonna get out my chart. Okay, so this is the size chart that I have. Now remember, all these numbers are in centimeters, okay? This is the age, 1 to 2 years, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. Now once you pick an age, you're going to follow the numbers underneath it, okay? So I'm going to make 3 to 4 years. So I will be looking at these numbers. And uh, the first number that we need is for the yoke. So the length of the yoke, so 1 to 2 years, 14 centimeters, 2 to 3, 15, 16, 17, and 17 centimeters. That means that our yoke should be approximately this long. Now, because we need to uh, do extra rows at the back here, we are going to stop when we are approximately that uh, sh uh, that this number short. Okay, so it was 3.5 centimeters for me should be 16 in total okay I'm gonna minus the three and a half centimeters because I need to stop earlier so that makes it about 12 and a half centimeters I measure like this so when you measure the yoke you actually uh, take the single crochet row into consideration so you measure with it I am at six centimeters I need to keep going until um, at uh, about 12 and a half or more. You can go over that uh, number. It doesn't matter. Not too much. Uh, otherwise, our sleeves might be very, very um, wide. So when you're approximately two rows away from finishing the full length of the yoke, you're going to stop. I'm going to come back and we are going to make extra rows at the back. For now... Keep going. I will see you when I have uh, the yoke ready to lift up the back. Okay, so I have my yoke done. I am ready to add the two extra rows at the back. Now, my yoke measures approximately 13 centimeters in length. 
remember I'm two rows away remember three and a half centimeters are going to add uh, after that so it should have been uh, approximately 12 and a half I'm 13 absolutely fine now there's one thing that we need to check before uh, we add the two rows just in case somebody is using a much thinner yarn than I am we are gonna quick do a quick measure of the back right here in between the two stitch markers at the back uh, because otherwise uh, if you're really far off with a chest measurement you will go you're gonna have to do a lot of chains underneath uh, the armholes okay so quickly we look at the chest so this is a half of the chest measurement because we're only um, measuring the back okay so for the size that I'm making it should be 32 centimeters when it's finished okay we're just taking precaution just in case we're very far off so 32 for me and you measure from one stitch marker to another and I'm approximately 28 28 and a half centimeters um, wide now now it should be 32 at the end uh, I'm approximately five four and a half five centimeters away from the length that I need it is fine but if you are more than five centimeters short at this point okay so if you're six or seven centimeters short because you're probably using um, uh, thinner yarn it is no problem okay so what you can do just add another row yes your yoke will be a little bit longer but you will not have to do a lot of chains right here okay so just add an extra row and then uh, do the same thing that I'm going to do right here now what uh, the only thing that that changes that extra row is that you will be able to do your uh, sleeves uh, one row shorter okay so you can measure out a row and you will be able to take that length off your sleeves okay uh, rather have um, more right here than uh, less hopefully that makes sense okay so if you're if you measure this at uh, now and you're more than five centimeters away from the chest measurement just add an extra row and then do the two extra rows at the back now I'm okay I'm just just there so I am able to do the two extra rows now uh, when you are uh, we, we need yarn now so I'm just going to open up uh, an extra skein so I don't have to cut right here if you don't have an extra skein of yarn you can just uh, cut off where you have finished and then uh, you will be able to start over again on the same place okay so I have an extra skein so I don't need to cut this so you want to have your work finished under your right hand okay so this is my loop and you're gonna uh, add your new yarn at the first at the right stitch marker at the back so right here where the stitch marker is I'm gonna add my yarn now make sure that your tail is on the inside of the cardigan this is my good side so I'm gonna leave the tail in there and you're going to chain two so one and two this counts as a stitch now the next stitch we need to work out what it is going to be okay because it's just a double crochet from the previous row and uh, it wasn't in the pattern yet look at the stitch before that okay so I have it's puffing out towards me right here okay so that means that it is going to be a back loop this time okay so it's looking towards me so this is going to be a back loop so the one before that is going to be a front loop and vice versa if this stitch the second stitch now is sticking out at the back it's going to be a front and then the one before that is going to be the back loop okay we just need to get the pattern uh, going again okay so this is front loop back I need to start with a front loop and just go as normal swapping those two stitches around if you were not sure if you have started with the correct stitch 
just have a look at at now remember again so the it should look like chess uh, sticking out sticking out sticking out and like this and not underneath each other okay so that way you will know you are, that you are on the correct stitch and keep going until you get to the next stitch marker okay just normal pattern okay so I'm finishing I have one more stitch left and then the chain one where the stitch marker is so you should finish your second last stitch or the last stitch that you have with the same stitch that you had the chain to so I started with a front loop and I finish with the front loop as well and then the very last one is a double crochet into that chain one like this okay so we have one row and we need to do one more row we are going to chain two this counts as a stitch and we are going to turn now we're gonna do one increase right here okay so chain two starts as uh, counts as a stitch and we're gonna put a double crochet into that very first stitch right here okay so we actually make two stitches instead of one a little increase and then from the next stitch you're gonna start with the same that you have finished here before the last I had a front loop so again it's going to be a front loop for me then a back loop and then a front loop and keep going until you get to that very very last chain 2 that we have started with okay so keep going I'm gonna see you right here where the chain 2 is okay so I have finished with the front loop again it has to match and then we have the chain two that we have started with we're gonna put two double crochets in there we need an increase if we did an increase on the other side so we need to match the both sides okay one double crochet and second double crochet into that chain two now we have finished you can cut off the yarn like this I'm just gonna chain and pull that out we are done now what this does if you put your um, yoke together because we're gonna connect it right now and you put the front stitch marker to where we have finished that extra rows you can see how our front is lower than the back okay so this is what we want we want the front to be lower um, then it's easier for the hood and for the neckline okay hopefully that wasn't uh, too difficult for you okay now the next step is to measure out how many chains we need to do because we are going to connect our yoke so have the back ready right here and we're gonna do the measuring again so again just to remind ourselves our chest the half should be this long so 32 centimeters for me I measure like this and I am at this point at about 30 centimeters here so I'm two centimeters short from the length that it needs to be now the easiest way to measure out uh, how many chains you need to do so know how many uh, how much you are missing I'm missing two centimeters and you're gonna just take do like this and put your measuring tape at the beginning of any of the stitch so you can see this stitch begins here so I have my measuring tape here and I will see how many stitches fit in those two missing centimeters for me so I have one two and three now it does need to be an odd number of stitches okay so one two three then five or seven you don't want to do any more than seven chains and you really shouldn't have to though okay so one two three four five or six seven you might only have one if you need it doesn't matter which one of those numbers it just needs to be an odd number just measure out make sure that it covers uh, the length if anything you should go for more chains uh, than less okay so one two three for me okay 
Now we're gonna start as usual for connection. So chain one, normal double crochet, and start with a back loop double crochet and keep going until you get to the stitch marker. Okay, so keep going. I will see you right here. Okay, so I have used up all my stitches right here. And now I have the chain one. I finished with a front post, uh, front loop, double crochet. It doesn't really matter which one you finished on right now. Okay, and then into the chain one, you're going to put in two double crochets. One and two. So a little increase. Just because we did an increase right here, we need to match the front to the back. Now you're going to um, do your chains, okay? So however many you need, I need three chains. One, two, and three. So to cover the missing length, okay? Then you're going to skip all this. This is going to be the sleeve. And you want to double crochet into the last stitch at the back right here, okay? Or the first one, whichever way you look at it. And here we are. We have our opening for our sleeve. Now after that again we need to figure out which stitch to start on. So the easiest way is uh, to look so one two stitches behind okay so it is a back loop so it's sticking out on the other side okay so I know that I always make an opposite one from the one that I can see so if it's a back loop it's going to be a front loop this time so the one stitch before that is going to be a back loop, okay, and vice versa. So a back loop double crochet. Now if you find this difficult to figure out which stitch you need to start with, just make a few stitches and then have a quick look if the pattern looks okay right here, okay, so if you don't have the same two stitches uh, in a row, okay? If you have them in the row uh, the same, that means you started with the wrong stitch, you can pull it out and start with a different one, okay? So for the back, keep going, I will see you at the end right here. Okay, finish that. Now I finished with a back loop, just like I started right here. That is an indication that I'm doing everything correctly. Now the last stitch before the sleeve should go into the chain two right here, okay? So don't forget that one, very important. Into that chain two, just a normal double crochet. Then you're gonna chain the same number as you have chained on the other side. So I have three, one, two, and three. You're gonna skip all that. You're gonna find your first stitch marker. You're gonna put two double crochets in here one and two and now you're gonna keep going with the pattern so you either figure out which uh, stitch you need to start on or just remember which one you had right here before the increase I had a front post oh sorry excuse me front loop I usually make a lot of post stitches that's why I keep m messing them up so I start with a front loop right here as well and then the back loop and then just finish the row as usual. Now this was the hard part. I, I hope that I, um, I explained that well and it wasn't too difficult. It's just um, little details, small details like this, uh, make those cardigans look much nicer and like in, visually. And for the child wearing it, it will be um, a better fit. Okay, so finish this row, back loop, my second last stitch is always back loop, and then a normal full double crochet into the last stitch. So here we are, we have now connected our yoke, 
Okay, we are done with this. This was, like I said, uh, uh, the hard part. There will be a, a few more, a bit more difficult parts that I will try to get uh, through. Now, the next row starts uh, exactly the same as normal. Chain one, double crochet, start with a back loop and keep going. And I will meet you right here where the chains are. Remember how many chains you had, okay? So keep going. I will see you right at the chains. Okay, so I have two stitches left and then the, my three chains. So it's a back loop. And I finish with the front loop before the chains. Again, uh, remember that. Whichever one you have finished with, it's a front loop for me. Then the three chains into each chain, however many you have, you just put a normal double crochet in. Okay, it should be an odd number of double crochets. So I have three. And then the, ne the next stitch you start with uh, whatever you finished here before the double crochets. I had a front loop. So I start with a front loop again. Front, back, front, and so on. Keep going. I will see you right here. Okay, so again, I have finished with a front loop, one double crochet into each of the chains. I have three double crochets. And then again, I st after that, I start with the same stitch that I have finished before my double crochet. So it's a front loop. And continue on until you finish this row. Now finish this row and then uh, make your next row just as normal so we don't have any corners again. You just keep swapping the stitches and those double crochets will come uh, the pattern. Okay, they are nothing right now. They are just double crochets. You will just go over them uh, swapping that around and they will just become the normal pattern. Okay, so finish this row. Row start and finish exactly the same. The second and the second last stitch will always be a back loop double crochet and then just a normal double crochet at the edge. Okay, so finish that. Uh, do another row and I will see you. We're going to do a little bit of increasing. Okay, so I'm ready to do an increase right now. Now, first of all, when we are increasing, we want to do it when we are crocheting on the, looking at the inside of the cardigan. Okay, so this is, uh, the next row for me is perfect to do that. Um, now, if you, if your next row is on the outside of the cardigan, it will be noticeable. So you can just add an extra row and then do the increase in the row number four after the connection. So one, two, three for me, it could be four, okay? So uh, in other words, if you are now finished at the left-hand side of your cardigan, face up, you see, put it face up like this with your stitch marker. And if you are here under your left hand, you can do the increase. If you're finished right here, do an extra row and then increase with me. It's just other, uh, otherwise it will be a little bit noticeable. Not too bad, but noticeable. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make five increases right now. We want to do two increases right here. So one approximately here and the other on the other side of the sleeve or uh, the gap or just so one is closer to the front and one is closer to the back, okay? The same on the other side where your uh, sleeve is, one and one, and one at the back right here, approximately in the middle. Now, it doesn't have to be um, absolutely accurate. I'm just going to find my stitch markers and I'm just going to mark it, just approximately. So, approximately, um, approximately the middle is right here somewhere and then so approximately here and approximately I don't know here somewhere like this okay you, you we might have to move them eventually when we get to them but for now it's just uh, a reference to uh, not miss them okay So 
year. Something like that, approximately, okay? Now, uh, all the way up to the stitch markers, we just do our normal pattern, okay? Nothing changes there until we hit those stitch markers. So start with a double crochet, next stitch is a back loop, front loop, and so on and so on. So keep going. I'll see you at my first stitch marker. Okay, so I'm at my stitch marker and I should be doing a front loop double crochet. And that's what you want. You want to do your uh, increases when it's time to do your front loop double crochet, okay? If your stitch marker is in the wrong stitch, just move it one way or another. Uh, it doesn't matter. It just, it looks better, okay? So I had my back loop. The next one is front loop. And this is my first increase. So I do a front loop double crochet as normal. Now I'm going to use the same stitch and make a back loop. So I'm using the same one, just catching the back loop. And then again, I'm going to go in one more time and make a front loop. Okay, so just like that. I used that same stitch three times. I have a front loop, back loop, and front loop, all in that one stitch, okay? And that is an increase. And then you continue on with a back loop uh, and uh, with a normal pattern until you hit your next stitch marker. Again, make sure that where your stitch marker is or your increase is going to start with a front loop uh, double crochet according to the pattern. Okay, I finish with a back loop. This one is a front loop then a back loop into that same stitch and then a front loop again now I'm gonna just pick it up that way is easier okay so again I have used another stitch three times that same stitch front loop back loop front loop and the same right here and then you want to do the same thing with all the other um, stitch markers or increases, okay? Now I have one at the back. Again, it has to be just approximately in the middle. Okay, so front loop, back loop, and I'm lucky again, I just put in my um, stitch marker in the right stitch. So it needs to be a front loop double crochet. I make a front loop, then a back loop into that same stitch, and then another front loop. Then I just continue pattern from the next stitch as usual. So this is all we are going to do. Okay, again, if you didn't, um, uh, if your stitch marker wasn't in the right stitch and you had to do a back loop double crochet, just move it one way. It doesn't really matter, okay? So one, two, three, so two more increases right here. And then we just continue on with a normal pattern. We just need to... Um, to get the length of the cardigan, okay? So I don't want uh, uh, the video to be way too long, so I'm gonna stop right here, and I'm just gonna uh, quickly tell you. So two more increases, and then after that, it's just purely to get the length, the same pattern all over again until we get the length, okay? So the length, let's speak about that. Okay, so the length is measured from underarm, okay? And these are the only increases that we are going to do. Just increase uh, right here, and then just keep going. No more increasing, okay? So it so, so it's not an A line. So we just increase, and then it just drops straight down. So we are measuring length from underarm, and it should be approximately this length, okay? Approximately here or uh, there. 
So when you measure, so um, I need uh, 26, 27 centimeters. I will aim for the 26, and then I will add an, a, a row of single crochets. Okay, so it measures at five and a half right now. I need to keep doing the pattern until I'm approximately right here. Okay, so I still have about 20 centimeters uh, to go. So uh, I will meet you when we have the length done. Okay, and so I have finished the length of uh, my cardigan. It should be approximately 26, 27 centimeters in length from underarm. And if I measure right here, it's 26 centimeters exactly. Plus, we're going to have one row of single crochets to finish the bottom. So the very last row is very simple. You're going to chain one and single crochet around. It does not matter which side you have finished on. That does not make a difference. We just want a solid row to finish. And just one single crochet in every stitch to the end of this row. Okay, so I have finished the single crochets. This is the last stitch. I'm going to chain one and cut my yarn. Now we are finished with this for now. Uh, don't hide your tails. Uh, we are going to do the edge around here as the very, very last uh, thing uh, for the main part of the cardigan. I'm not talking about the pockets right here. So if you need to add more length or take away a little bit, uh, you will still be able to do that because we're not going to hide the tails yet. Okay, so you will be able to change here if you want. Okay. So the last thing that we are going to do in part one is we are going to do the neckline right now. Okay, so make sure that you are looking at the face side or the good side of the cardigan. Remember, I have this uh, stitch marker right here. This is actually quite important because we are going to have to um, attach our hood in between this row and the next row that we make. Okay, so it will be much easier if um, we go this way. Okay, so uh, first of all, grab a few stitch markers. We're going to do a little bit of decreasing right here on the neckline. It is quite wide at the moment. Um, so first of all, see the corner stitches. They leave this bigger hole. And I'm going to mark each of them. And I'm going to mark two stitches at the back of the neck, okay? Just any two. One closer to one side and one closer to here. So we are going to do decreases there. There will be, uh, the decreases around the corners will be slightly bigger than the ones at the back. And we will do one at the front, but it's easy to know because we're going to do it on the second uh, stitch and on the second last one, okay? So um, if you will need more decreasing if you think that it's really wide you can do another decrease on the top of the shoulder here and on the other side for the size one to two years the smaller size i have made another decrease right here and right here okay as long as it is an even number of decreases you will be fine with uh, the pattern now i'm going to reattach right here right at the very very uh first stitch and we will be <clears throat> crocheting into the leftover chains right here okay i'm gonna connect into the first one i'm gonna chain one and make a single crochet into that same stitch now i'm gonna skip the next one so this would be the next one i'm gonna skip that uh, and this is the decrease okay and then I will make one single crochet until I get close to that stitch marker. Try not to miss any, but if you do, it's not really a huge problem. Now, when you get to the stitch marker, you see there's one more stitch right here, which I'm going to skip. I'm going to go right into the corner stitch and make a single crochet. I'm going to take that out. I don't need this. 
and then I'm gonna skip the one right after and go into the next one okay so in the corners we decrease by skipping the one before and the one after okay so that's two decreases straight away then over the shoulder I'm just gonna do one single crochet into each stitch now if you do need um, another decrease you can just skip one stitch and go into the next one but I do not need that so I'm gonna keep going again this is a corner stitch and there's one stitch before it so I'm gonna skip that go right into the corner stitch single crochet I'm gonna take this out I am going to skip the next one so this one skip then I'm going to skip this stitch there's the two stitch markers here at the back and I'm just gonna skip that one that was marked so I'm gonna skip this one go into the next one then one single crochet again my other stitch marker this was not in the corner this was just in the back of the neck so I'm gonna take that out I'm just gonna skip that one stitch into the next one and keep going now this is a corner stitch so I skip the stitch before go straight into that corner and single crochet and I'm gonna skip the stitch right after it and then continue on because I don't have uh, decreases on the top of the shoulder so just one single crochet into each stitch <clears throat> again this is the corner stitch I'm gonna skip one before that straight into the corner with a single crochet skip the next one right after and then continue until the second last stitch now at the at the very end here it might get a little difficult to see so this is the second last and this is the last stitch yes so I'm gonna skip the second last stitch and go right into the last one okay now I'm gonna chain one and then let's just have a quick look for a second okay so we have decreased quite a lot but have in mind that we are going to have five rows of single crochets right here so it's gonna look like this okay that gap so the next row I'm gonna do the same as I have done right here with the back loop and the front loop double crochets you can just do double crochets if you prefer you won't be able to see a whole lot of, uh, of this ne neck but um, whatever you decide to do okay so I'm gonna double crochet and then I'll start with a back loop and the front loop double crochet and the back loop and I will keep going until I get to the end of this row okay so I'm at the very very uh, last stitch and I'm just going to make a double crochet right here so just like that now don't worry if it looks like there's um, that the edge is not straight it's gonna even out when we have the uh, single crochet rows around now if you want you can add another row of double crochets on top if you want the neckline to be higher um, I will probably leave it like this and as long as the last row that you make is a solid single crochet row okay so like I said if you want you can do another row of double crochets and then just finish with single crochets around uh, this is enough for me I will just finish with one single crochet into each stitch it's not gonna be a very high uh, neckline but it will be it. sort of like this okay so keep going finish this row with a uh, single crochets 
Okay, and I am finished. I'm just going to chain one and cut my yarn. And this is the end of part one. We have still quite a lot of work to do in part two. So let's see what we have. So I have the neckline like this. And it's going to be a gap like that. Okay? So right here. Now, if you feel that this is really really still really really wide you can go back and do more decreases in the first row but um, you know there will be a hood on top of it all or around it so don't make it too small okay so like I said this is the end of uh, part one and part two we'll start with the hood then we're gonna do the sleeves we will finish the front right here and we will do the pockets okay thank you very much for watching and I will see you in part two really really soon. Bye!